This broadcast is brought to you by VelocityMicro.com What's up, nerds? Today is a special day. It's the 6th PolygonReview.com Stock of Two broadcast, and we got a very special guest all the way from South Korea. And it's also special because here in Sweden it's Midsummer's Eve. That won't mean shit to most of you, but here in Sweden it means, among other things, that there's a compelling social pressure to eat pickled herring and drink weirdly flavored vodka. Myself, I won't do that. I will eat some very interesting salad, probably, and drink perfectly flavored mojitos of my own making. Is that just the kind of multi layered nerd that I am? But I digress. Before we kick off today's broadcast, I'd like to thank all of you for the very positive and constructive feedback that you offered uh, in regards to the last broadcast, the interview I made with uh, Matthew Peterson of IRIP, who had very many interesting points and it was a very interesting conversation, if I may say so, but the audio was less than perfect. And for that I take full responsibility. However, so many of you expressed a lot of understanding and eagerness to hear what was being said, and so I'm very appreciative of that. I produced a written transcript of the interview uh, over at polygonreview.com, you can go there and check it out because there's a lot of really good food for thought there. And I will be bringing up some of Matthew's point in this interview today with Dan Artosis Demkowski. So you might want to check it out. However, enough of this, let's give it to the man himself, the Starcaster, the legendary Terran Terminator, the present day StarCraft II Zerg Sensei, the man himself. Dan Artosis Demkowski. Hello and welcome everybody to this fifth StarCraft II broadcast with me, Sebastian Hoberg of PolygonReview.com. Today we've got a special guest all the way from South Korea. Hello Dan, better known as Artosis. How are we doing today? Hey man, I'm having a, a very busy day to say the least. Just got done some state of the game and some other stuff. and uh, But, you know, I'm having a good little beta break here, I have to say. Yeah, the, the, the break might be a good thing. Uh, enable people to get things in order and do some exciting stuff for the future. Uh, we're going to talk a bit more about that. And I know you're busy because um, of many, many things happening. Not all esports related, I'm sad. Uh, <laughs> but um, let's talk a little bit about the fact that you've been living in uh, self-chosen exile in South Korea for quite a while now, and you seem to be doing fine. How's life, and wh what do you do on a typical Artosis day? <laughs> well, uh, life is great. I love it out here. Uh, every morning I wake up, uh, maybe 7.30 to 8 in the morning. Uh, I just basically get ready, eat breakfast, uh, then I travel in. I live about 45 minutes from where I work now. I just recently moved. Um, and, you know, I just I go into the office for IEG, International Sports Group. Uh, I edit videos in the morning, some. I check all the news that I miss for the day, talk on MSN to people, figure out what's going on, what's coming up. Uh, brainstorm ideas with Juani on what sort of content I can go ahead and produce. Uh, if there's other esports stuff that we're doing at the time, I'll work on that. Around noontime, of course, I go grab some food, and normally by then I've I'm leaving to go uh, make some videos somewhere or uh, meet with people for various reasons, to set up future videos. Um, and then I normally, if you know, StarCraft Two is around. I'll go play StarCraft Two afterwards immediately uh, until I basically am too tired to be awake. Uh, if not, I hang out with uh, Apollo, Idra, Tasteless, Juana. You know, just whatever friends I have uh, around that are doing something that day. So that's uh, my typical day right now. Doesn't sound too bad at all. Those videos you mentioned is that um, Korean content or more to the international audience? Well, it's uh, for the international audience, but it's basically content. The Most of the content I make is Korean-based, you know, stuff that you can only get if you're here in Korea and you have the connections I do have. Uh, that seems to be what people really like to see out of me because, um, 
you know, it's it's hard to get that any other way. So that's uh, basically what I keep it down to. A lot of stuff Hwani translates. And other than that, I, I do a lot of videos with myself, Idra, Tasteless, Apollo, you know, and just uh, videos of some famous personalities in the scene, giving their take on various things, you know. I think we've all seen them and we're looking forward to more. However, let's get into the stock of two business by starting with Brood War. Because back in the old days, which seems a very long time ago, uh, you were an, ev- an evangelist of all things Terran. And you had notable yeah. success in uh, tournaments with that race before focusing on a professional casting career in Korea, similar to what Nick Tasteless Plot um, have been doing. Uh, but now, in Stock of Two, you're a dedicated third player. And um, mm. especially according to uh, Day Nine in his recent free uh, dailies, I believe, uh, one to yeah. be feared and emulated. What made you change <laughs> race, and uh, why do you find uh, Serg so attractive in Stock of Two? Well, um, it's it's several different things. First off, for Terran, it doesn't feel like Terran from StarCraft One. At first, Terran versus Protoss felt really gross. You had to use a lot of Bionic, which I don't like. Also, uh, the Marauder gives Terran a lot of mobility, which um, it may sound a little bit crazy, but I almost liked the lack of mobility in Terran in StarCraft One. Uh, so it made you play a certain style. Um, I, I really like when I'm playing a game to play economy base. That's my base style, I would say. Even though I'm I'm known also quite a bit for doing a lot of aggressive play, but uh, you know, early in the game, I really like to concentrate on very e- economical base play. And Zerg is a very very defensive race in this game. I feel it doesn't really have the weapons it had in StarCraft One to actually get very offensive until the very very late game. So. Uh, Zerg really kind of fits me in StarCraft 2, and I really enjoy it. it. It involves a lot of APM and stuff, and I can see right away a lot of things I can do to improve. So uh, that's that's kind of, in a nutshell, why I chose to go with Zerg in StarCraft 2. Seem to be seem to be doing very well, and I recommend everybody to go to day9tv.bleep.tv and check out the latest um, of our toses there. However, you play on the Asian servers, obviously, mostly at least, mm-hmm. and... Um, at least uh, common knowledge has it. Um, I'm certainly not in a position to comment, but it says that um, on the Asian service, uh, players are far more aggressive and far more likely to cheese. In other words, use unconventional strategies. Uh, mm. Is that the case? And why are there such regional differences in play, would you say? Uh, it's, it's kind of the case. It's not completely the case. Like I would say the ch- players overall are more solid on Asia. Uh, I'd say the players overall on the Europe and U.S. servers are a little bit more cheesy uh, and a little bit more individualistic with their builds. But the Asian players definitely are hyper-aggressive. Like, for instance, Zerg vs. Zerg is 99.9% baneling all-ins on the Asian server. Um, people will attack you nonstop on the Asian server, but... Uh, it's it's I think it's a stronger style overall. Maybe not. I think cheesy isn't quite the right word. It's not always you know. There's of course there's a certain number of that, but it's not all people just trying to get these quick easy wins. It's a lot of very aggressive play, and you know, I'm not sure exactly why it's turning into that. It kind of feels like you get the most bang for your buck going. For instance, Zerg vs Zerg, Baneling all ins, practicing that all day. Seems like it's the most bang for your buck. So I think that. Stuff like that is maybe why it's developed that way in Asia, whereas it's just not fun, so no one's doing it as much on the U.S. and European servers. That's interesting. And that leads us on to uh, the Battle.net 2.0 and um, some of the controversial decisions of Blizzard. Currently, to my knowledge at least, uh, there are no plans on lifting the inbuilt restrictions on cross-regional play in StarCraft 2. In other words, you know, if you want to play internationally on Europe, America, and Asia, you have to buy free copies of the game. And they say this is uh, due to lag concerns, but one may argue it could be for other reasons. Do you think that this might have uh, a limiting consequence for StarCraft II as an eSport, the fact that it's difficult to participate globally? Yeah, you know, I think it definitely could. The fact that uh, you could play with pretty much anyone in the world that has a good internet connection with no lag on StarCraft 1. Mm-hmm. There's a big reason why it was so great as an eSport. Uh, you could practice with anyone anywhere, have international tournaments very easily. Um, StarCraft 2, they've mentioned they're, they're going to look into possibly later on 
making it so you can switch servers. But at first, at least, we definitely won't have that. And yeah, I think it can't do anything but hurt the scenes. I mean, everyone's going to develop kind of in their own scene, and it's really hard to go to another server. Even if you buy the copy, you might lag over there. So it's like a risk of $50 or however much that copy is. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I, I don't like it that it's going to happen, but I mean, that's the way it's going to be. So we're going to have to figure out how to fix that. You know, can people make launchers like they did for IC Cup? Who knows? I, I certainly hope so, so that we can, you know, reunite all the players. 